the greatest Liverpool captain of the 21st century. The heartbeat of the Reds midfield who has lifted not only the Champions League trophy, but has brought plenty more success to Anfield. All while being part of England's squad that could have, or should have probably, won major silverware. That's right everybody, today's video is all about- Wait, who? What do you mean we haven't narrowed it down enough? We can hear some shouting from the back saying Jordan Henderson, and some for Steven Gerrard. Looks like we have a debate on our hands, so let's get straight to it. Who is, or rather was, the better Liverpool captain, Steven Gerrard or Jordan Henderson? We've already touched on trophies, so let's use silverware as our first point of comparison. After all, nothing says successful captain like standing on a podium lifting something big and shiny. Now remember, we're just comparing what each player won as club captain. Whatever they won before, taking the armband does not count. Side, fresh-faced teenager Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard made his Liverpool debut in November 1998, and in October 2003, the local lad was made club captain and manager Gerard Houllier, replacing Sammy Herpia. The 2003 and 04 season ended trophyless, and Houllier was replaced by Rafael Benitez for the following campaign, which climaxed in Istanbul, with Gerrard lifting Liverpool's fifth European Cup aloft after that remarkable comeback against Milan. And more on that game shortly. A year on, Liverpool again came from behind to win a major final, this time the FA Cup against West Ham. Again, a little more on that match shortly. The Community Shield followed in 2006, and despite some more final appearances and near misses, the next and last Liverpool trophy under Gerrard's captaincy was the 2012 League Cup. Despite some terrific achievements, it's the Premier League title Gerrard didn't win in his career that gets brought up as much as his silverware. Four years after signing from Sunderland, Jordan Henderson succeeded Gerrard as captain in June 2015 after Gerrard's departure and has held the position ever since. This means he's lifted seven trophies and remarkably seven different trophies. Three were added during 2022, the FA Cup after beating Chelsea on penalties at Wembley. The EFL Cup also after beating Chelsea on penalties at Wembley and just recently the Community Shield, neither against Chelsea nor at Wembley. This year was full of domestic triumph, while 2019 was his and Liverpool's year of continental and global glory. Henderson led the Reds to victory in Madrid against Tottenham Hotspurs in the Champions League final, which preceded winning both the UEFA Super Cup and the Club World Cup later that year. But sandwiched between those two trophy-filled years was the one Liverpool fans had wanted so desperately. In 2020, Henderson captained the first Liverpool team to win the Premier League, bringing a top-flight title to Anfield for the first time since 1990. European Cup wins in 2005 and 2019 were spectacular, but the Premier League ended so many years of hurt for the red half of Merseyside. So perhaps Henderson has edged this one, or should captains be judged more on the moments that earned those trophies rather than the trophies themselves? How do our two legends measure up? Back to the 2005 Champions League final, the miracle of Istanbul. 3-0 down to Milan at halftime, Liverpool staged what many believe is the greatest comeback of all time to draw 3-3 and then win on penalties. What was the catalyst for the comeback? It was Gerrard's towering header that made the score 3-1, and six minutes later Liverpool were leveled thanks to Xabi Alonso rebound from a penalty won by Steven Gerrard. On to Cardiff a year later for the FA Cup final, aka the Gerrard final, where, as the name suggests, Stevie G played a vital role. Having already fired one equaliser into the top corner, Gerrard stepped up again with perhaps the most memorable goal of his career, when on the stroke of 90 minutes, he rifled a bouncing ball low into the bottom corner from 35 yards to make it 3-3. He then added a penalty in the shootout as Liverpool won the last cup final in Cardiff. A famous strike against Olympiacos and countless other winners and stunners, there was no end to Gerrard's big moments in a Liverpool shirt. Jordan Henderson, meanwhile, doesn't have any finals named after him, or too many Roy of the Rover style performances. He scored some brilliant goals against the likes of Chelsea and Manchester City, but not with the regularity of Gerrard. Henderson has a more thankless, workmanlike job in the Liverpool team, and like a true captain, he does it well without fail, week in, week out. 
For his lack of Hollywood moments, Henderson balances that out with no haunting mistakes. The same can't be said for Gerard. Yes, that's right, it's time to talk about the slip. Late in the 2013-14 Premier League season, the title was Liverpool's to lose when Chelsea came to Anfield. When controlling a pass, Gerrard slipped, allowing Demba Ba to run free on goal and score the opener. Liverpool lost that game. The title was then no longer in their hands, and Gerrard's slip had cost them by far the greatest chance of winning the title they wanted so much, the Premier League. Does Gerrard's slip cost him in this battle of the captains, or do his previous big moments still see him ahead in this round? Or is a stable, reliable man like Henderson the better alternative? leaving the highlight reel moments to teammates. Before you answer that, let's compare their teammates and managers. While Brendan Rodgers gave Henderson the captaincy, the majority of this tenure has come under Jurgen Klopp's time in charge. Playing a 4-3-3 system constantly, Liverpool have had world-class players in every position, including Alisson, Virgil van Dijk, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mohamed Salah, and until recently, Sadio Mane. The best Liverpool team since the 80s. Is it any wonder this team finally broke that Premier League hoodoo? With Klopp's coaching and so much talent, how much influence has Henderson in a defensive midfield role really had on Liverpool's success? Gerard, a more attacking or box-to-box -box central midfielder, didn't exactly play alongside a bunch of nobodies, though. They would have been nowhere near the 2014 Premier League title without Luis Suarez, goal that campaign plus, with players such as Jamie Carragher, Pepe Reina, and Fernando Torres. Should Liverpool have won more during Gerrard's era? That being said, Liverpool would have won less in the same era without Gerrard. No disrespect to Jimmy Traore, Jan Kronkamp, and Antonio Nunes, but they probably wouldn't have come close to winning some of football's biggest prizes without Gerrard in their side. Gerrard's period with the armband spanned regular changes on Maisie's side, beginning with Gerrard Houllier, then Rafael Benitez, Roy Hodgson, Sir Kenny Dalglish, and finally Brendan Rodgers, all top managers in their own right. They had varying levels of success at Anfield while imposing their own style to play. One thing that never changed, however, was their reliance on Gerrard in the center of midfield. Many managers suggest a good deal of longevity, and that's exactly what Steven Gerrard had. In 1989, Gerrard joined the club he supported as a nine-year-old and worked his way through the academy before his debut in 1998, and a whopping 710 appearances and 185 goals over the next 17 years. Even though he spent a year and a half in MLS with LA Galaxy before retirement, Gerrard is considered to be Mr. Liverpool, a one-man club without actually being a one-man club, the ultimate servant to his local team. Or was he? In 2005, surrounding the drama of Istanbul, Gerrard was on the verge of a move to Chelsea, rejecting Liverpool's £100,000 a week offer, a club record at the time. Liverpool kept rejecting Chelsea's offers, but were re-signed to losing Gerrard. But then Stevie G had a change of heart, committing his long-term future to Anfield. A club legend now, but in 2005, his status between hero and villain was on a knife's edge. Jordan Henderson's time at Liverpool hasn't exactly been a flash in the pan either. He's now been at the club for 11 years. But at 32, you would be surprised if he will be a first-team player for as long as Gerrard was. That's perhaps not a fair comparison, as Henderson transferred from Sunderland in 2011. But his story is remarkably similar, having spent 10 years coming through his hometown club's academy before becoming a stalwart of the Anfield midfield. England regular and winning player of the year awards. He has 450 appearances and 33 goals thus far. He may not have quite the cult's hero status Gerard has, but also his loyalty doesn't have the question marks that slightly tainted Gerard in 2005. It's also worth noting that Gerard was selected to be England captain from 2012 until his international retirement in 2014. Henderson wore the armband on a permanent basis for the 2017-18 season, before dropping down to White's captain in favor of Harry Kane. Henderson was widely praised for his role in the COVID-19 pandemic as captain's captain, gathering the 20 Premier League captains together to organize fundraising for the NHS, raising millions of pounds and helping to change the public's negative perception of footballers. Current Aston Villa manager Steven Gerrard didn't have much an opportunity in his playing career, but such an effort from Henderson can't go unnoticed. So there we are. It's time for you to decide which of these two Premier League legends has been the better Liverpool captain. Let us know down in the comments, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.